Hi, this is Patrick from STH. Today we're going to show that you can pass through an Intel Octane 16 gig M.2 client device through to a virtual machine running on Linux KVM. Here's a quick illustration of what we're going to be doing. We're going to take a physical piece of hardware and we're going to give it to a Windows Server 2012 guest VM. That VM is going to take over the device and as we're going to see the performance when you do that is exactly what we would expect from bare metal. This feature is commonly used when you need high performance storage or you need high performance networking and you don't want to have a hypervisor layer in between. Getting started, you can see that our Proxmox VE 5.0 system is set up. This is running Debian Stretch, and you can see that we have in our block devices an NVMe drive. That NVMe drive is the Intel Optane M.2 device, and we can see it on our PCIe root complex. We can also put that line in that PCI address into our KVM setup. There are a number of steps that we had to do to get this working behind the scenes, but once the VTD is set up, you can actually start the VM with the corrected config file. And we're going to see a few things happen as this starts. The first thing that we're going to see is we're going to check that the Intel Optane SSD actually got attached directly to the VM and is not going to be used by the host hypervisor OS, which is Debian in this case. So we're going to go back to the command line and make sure that it is no longer visible to the host OS as a block device. As you can see, there's no more NVMe device there, so we know it actually did get passed through. So let's open a remote desktop connection into the VM and see if the device is present in the VM now. Once we're logged in, we're going to open up disk management so we can see if the disk arrived and indeed it did. So what we can do now is we can create a volume and then use that volume to check performance just to see if indeed it's getting the full device or if it, there's a virtualization translation layer that's going on. We're going to give the device drive letter D. We're going to call it Optane Memory just so we know what it is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to verify performance. We're not going to do an exhaustive test since that's going to take a couple hours. Instead, we're going to bring up a quick benchmark and just test to see whether or not the numbers that we're seeing in the virtual machine are what we would expect from physical hardware. We're also setting Q depth very low here to two, just because Optane works pretty well at low Q depth, unlike normal SSDs. In terms of a target and what we'd want to see, we're going to be looking for about 145 megabytes per second write and about 900 megabytes per second for read. While that's running, we're going to qu quickly go over to the Intel Optane Memory Series ARC page. You can see that the sequential write speed is up to 145 megabytes per second and sequential read speed is up to 900 megabytes per second. So that's where we're coming up with these numbers. That write speed figure is not crazy, but that's what the drive is spec'd at. So we're really just testing whether or not the VM is getting full performance. As the test is finishing, you can see that we're about 145 and 900. So spot on in terms of performance. The Intel product page specifically says that the requirements for using these Optane M2 SSDs are seventh generation core processors. We're using a Xeon D server test platform, so we can confirm that it will work on a normal server platform. And not only will it work, but you can actually do pretty advanced features such as VTD pass through using the drives. If you want a cheap way to play with Optane, this is a sub $80 way to go do it. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more cool videos.